We all would like to feel that when we're locked in our homes at night sleeping, we're finally safe from the worries of the daytime world. But for Barbara Graff, in December of 1986, her own house turned out to be the most dangerous place she could be. An actress has helped us reconstruct the events of that winter night. It was the week before Christmas. Barbara had gone to bed shortly after midnight. By 2 a.m., the house was completely quiet. A short in the TV or VCR had caused an electrical fire. 911 emergency. Dispatcher Gay Nail Bear took the call. Okay, you have a structure fire. Your address is? I took down the information, yeah, her name and her address. Then at that point, Joan Parton took over okay. so that I could dispatch the fire department there. 911 emergency. I'm on the floor. All right. I can't breathe. Is there smoke in your house? Yes. Okay. By the time Barbara woke up, she was already overwhelmed by the smoke okay. and toxic gases. Your bedroom is behind the garage. All right. Is your bedroom door shut? No. Okay. Is the smoke coming in the bedroom? I don't know. Okay. All right. Can you work your way over to the window? Can you tell where the window the is? The window is above, above my bed, and the smoke was too... Okay. Too strong. Okay. You're doing real well. Stay real calm. We're going to help you. I'm going to die. No, you're not going to die. Please help me. We still have her on the line at this time. We are trying to get a better location. Olympia police arrived first, including Sergeant Bob McBride. We went around initially trying to find open doors or something that was unlocked so we could get into the residence. The window's locked. It's a situation where you're almost pulling your hair out. It's frustrating because you know there's somebody in there that needs your help, and your hands are sort of tied trying to figure out how you're going to get in there to help them. We tried to come in from the sliding glass window, but the inside the residence was so thick with acrid smoke, you couldn't even breathe. God, please. We're helping you. We're, the police are there. And two kitties. Okay. Barbara, are your kitty cats there? They would be on the bed, which is higher. I eventually climbed in through a, a bedroom window and made numerous attempts trying to crawl through the house to get yeah, to where the lady was trapped. You, right. you could only hold your breath for so long and get so far where you feel like you're losing consciousness. McBride found one of Barbara's cats apparently dead. But none of the police officers could get far enough into the house to find her. Barbara, you're doing real well. You're staying calm and that's the most important thing. I'm not. I'm afraid. Oh, please help me. God Almighty, please help me. It seemed to take a long time, even for me, and I thought, boy, it must seem like forever for her. I kept repeating to her, it's just a matter of a few more minutes, a few no, more minutes. Mind. But I was also getting concerned and running out of things to say to her to reassure her. The first fire truck arrived within five minutes of the call. Okay, the fire department is there now, too. It's just a matter of a few minutes, and we're going to get you out. Please call them now. I'm losing it. No, Barbara, don't do that. Stay with me. Stay with me. Let me help you. Help me, Barbara. Don't you understand? I do. I'm trying real hard. Help me to help you, okay? I'm trying. Please. As information was gathered from Barbara, Gay Nell dispatched it to fireman Greg Ferguson and the others on the scene. It was a very frustrating search in the fact that you had to crawl on your hands and knees trying to identify everything by feel. We couldn't see a foot in front of us. It's disorienting. It's like being underwater. You don't know which way's up. The air masks that we wear restrict your voice. The equipment that we wear restricts your hearing. I can't. Bang on the side of the wall. I can't make it up there. Don't you understand? Barbara, is there something you can throw uh, to the window? Barbara, throw something. I threw a... Okay. I threw a something. Okay, good. Throw something yeah, else. South side. Only window. South side. My bedroom. Good. Good girl. It's just a matter of a minute, and they're going to have you I'm out. I'm on my bed. I'm on the floor. Okay. Please, God. It took me a few minutes to realize that the window was high, 
and she could not break it out. She was having respiratory distress, and she was disoriented in the room also. I thought my best efforts were to keep her on the phone, keep her calm so that they could come to her. The back side of the residence is where the bedroom window is at. They knew Barbara was trapped in her bedroom, continuing to breathe the toxic smoke and carbon monoxide, but they could not find her. We came to what appeared to be a hallway. It was an opening, uh, and it ended up being a large walk-in closet. You find out that you're in this little tiny space, and we have difficult, difficulty finding our way back out. Why can't they hurry? They are hurrying. Honest to God, they uh, are. Can't. Please. Please. I'm still here, Barbara. I won't leave you. I won't leave you until oh you're outside. God. Barbara? Barbara? Honey. I know. I'm dying. Can you hear somebody outside? No. Can you hear them? Please help. Speak up, Barbara. Please help me. Good. See, they're coming, Barbara. Please. Hang on. I stopped, held my breath, and I heard a moaning. Worked my way along the bed, and that's when I found her. It was a relief. The frustration factor was over. We'd done the first half of the job, finding the person. Uh, the second half was getting her out, keeping her alive. She was still conscious, but not responding real well. So I made the decision to take off my air mask and turn on the positive pressure so that the air actually shoots out of the mask and forces into her. By taking off his mask, Ferguson broke policy and risked his life for hers. Take a breath. Take a breath. To give her oxygen. Breathe it. You want to be able to just rush in and rush out like they do in the movies, but that isn't the way it works. That had to be a very terrifying experience because minutes seem like hours in a situation like that. Fifteen minutes after her call for help, Barbara was out of the house. She was treated for smoke inhalation and released from the hospital within hours. Both of her cats were also treated and successfully revived at the scene. It's every firefighter's dream to, to save somebody. We train for it, we work for it. That's our job to go in and get them out. And it, and it gives us great satisfaction. Usually on a structure fire, you tell them to get out of the house and the fire department takes over from there. And I felt like I was part of the team. I was able to uh, help them help someone else. How about right here? Looks good to me. If Johnny hadn't been on the other end of that line, I think I'd have given up. I think I'd have just let it go. That was my only link with life then. She saved my life, along with Craig Ferguson. I, how do you express that? I, I don't know how to express that. Barbara's life has changed dramatically in the three years since the fire. Everything became more important to me. Your friends become more valuable. The flowers are prettier, and, and the mountains are prettier, and I believe in living life um, daily with a feeling of happiness. You never know how many of those days you're going to have left. Next. We've had several officers killed in the line of duty. You know, it's become open season on cops. 